Hi, I'm Martin McGill. Welcome to another edition of Wildlife Weekly. OK, well, there's a, a couple of very strong characters on the reserve to look out for at the moment. Uh, a very interesting species called the shoveler. It's often likened to uh, the whales that filter feed in the ocean. And it's exactly the same technique. They will scoop up beakfuls of water, pump their tongues to eject the water out the sides and retain the microscopic food that's left behind. And if you look from the highs, you often see a pair or two of shoveler, sometimes groups of them going round and round in circles, creating a vortex which draws the food to the surface. Another species that you will see uh, around the highs, it's very much a skulking species, so often hard to see, but we're seeing them around at the moment, is the water rail. And that, that can be found uh, picking its way around the edge of the pond. To look at it, you wouldn't believe it, but water rails, uh, they're omnivorous and they will actually kill things if they need to during hard weather. Uh, we certainly uh, have seen them catching small birds and drowning them before, and they will feed on anything that's died. They will pick off um, flesh and try to get to the inner parts of creatures if they find them. The real spectacle on the reserve at the moment is the, the sheer numbers of waders that are building up and their reaction to predators. We're seeing them, uh, uh, they're absolutely terrified of any of the predators that fly over and we're, we're talking about things like the peregrine falcon, that's the apex predator here that is trying to make a meal out of them. There's also buzzards in, um, very active and they're flying over the flocks disturbing them, much less affected at catching uh, wading birds. Wading birds respond in different ways to, uh, to aerial predators, birds of prey. We often see the, the, the golden plover lapwing will take flight immediately and try and get above the, the raptor to escape being caught. These red shank are crouching down and looking up at a potential predator that's flying over. You can use bird behaviour in exactly the same way. So uh, if the birds start looking up, then so should you, because there's a good chance you're going to spot a peregrine falcon flying overhead very quickly. It's not all just about birds. Uh, there's some interest in mammal behaviour. And here's John Crooks to explain. This is a harvest mouse. It's actually one of the smallest mammals of the UK. And it's a wetland creature. Well, it used to be. It used to nest in the uh, Phragmites and the reeds, and then it moved into our crops. But as our crops started getting shorter, they've moved back to the reed beds. But a lot of the um, other mammals, such as hedgehogs or dormice, even badgers are going underground for a bit of a nap, a bit of a hibernate. With the harvest mice, they're so small, they can't get enough reserves to uh, last out the winter. So they're technically active throughout the winter and they make little nests, uh, tuck themselves away in cosy corners, but go out and forage on the uh, what uh, berries and uh, grain that might be available. We've got them here at Slimbridge in our wetland mammal exhibit, but also as a sort of reserve, just in case if they become too endangered in the wild, we can do release programs. If you enjoy the Wildlife Weeklies, then do remember to subscribe via the YouTube channel and please do share with your friends. Yeah.